This video will walk through how to properly execute a basic concussion assessment using the Varsity Health Concussion Assessment Tool. Our concussion assessment tool was developed by a team of sport and exercise medicine physicians, athletic therapists, physiotherapists, and neuropsychologists using the SCAT-5 as our base model. This tool is meant to be used as part of the full Varsity Health Concussion Policy. For more information on that policy, please speak to a Varsity Health staff member. Before we begin, please remember if you believe someone has sustained a concussion, remove them from play, refer them to a Varsity Health staff member as soon as possible. This video is composed of two parts. Part 1 will explain each section in detail, while Part 2 will go through a full demonstration. This section is used to gather athlete injury and illness history. Please be sure to read these questions out loud to the student athlete and document their responses. For the first question, the student athlete's answer should include diagnosed and undiagnosed concussions. The symptom evaluation section can be completed by the student athlete, or you can read each symptom out loud and ask them to give you a rating. The athlete should rate each symptom from 0 to 6 based on how they feel right now. Symptoms with a score of 3 or more should be discussed in more detail. You can document this additional information at the back of the sheet. Please also bring this to the attention of a Varsity Health staff member. At the bottom of Section 1, be sure to ask how many hours of sleep the athlete had last night. You'll need to tabulate the number of symptoms and the symptom severity. Number of symptoms is a count of all symptoms that they put a score of 1 or greater on. The symptom severity is a sum of all symptom scores. If applicable, determine if reported symptoms are aggravated with physical or mental activity. Mental activity includes things such as studying or socializing, for example. Indicate if an athlete reports the symptoms themselves or if you interviewed the athlete. If you know the athlete well, report if the athlete is no different or very different. Or you can select unsure. Select NA if the athlete has reported zero symptoms on their baseline. The BSI-18 is a mental health screening tool. The athlete is encouraged to complete this section themselves. Clinician interview is not recommended. Note that this screen is meant for the athlete to reflect on how they have felt over the past seven days. If there are any adverse findings on this screen, please report them to a Varsity Health staff member. Starting with Section 3, you'll need to complete the rest of the form on behalf of the student athlete. The first part of this section is five simple questions. Be sure to score each one out of one and give an orientation score out of five based on how many questions they answered correctly. Next is the immediate memory section. Here you will read the list of 10 words in the order they are seen on the page. You should read at a pace of approximately one word per second. Once you have finished reading, the student athlete must read the list back to you. They can list the words in any order. Circle the words that are correctly listed, regardless of order. You will repeat this process two more times, including reading the athlete the list of 10 words. Once the athlete has completed this three times, tabulate their total score of correct words out of 30. Next is concentration. For the first part, you will read the string of numbers and the athlete must repeat back to you in reverse order. So you would say 493 and the athlete needs to say 394. If the athlete gets the string correct, circle the one for correct and move on to the four digit string. If the athlete gets it wrong, they can attempt the other three digit string, 629. If the athlete gets the second string correct, they still receive one point. If they get both strings incorrect, they do not receive a point. If the athlete gets both strings wrong, you still move on to the next string length. Once you reach the end of the six digit strings, tabulate their score out of four. The second part of the concentration section is listing the months in reverse order. The athlete simply needs to begin with December and move backwards to January. If they list all 12 months in correct reverse order, they receive one point. Tabulate the total concentration score out of four. This section is a physical exam of the cervical spine. Please complete this section within your scope of practice and your level of comfort. First is the six cervical spine ranges of motion. Please report any adverse findings such as reduced range of motion or pain. If there are no adverse findings, you can write normal or within normal limits. Next is palpation. Please palpate based on your skill set and anatomical knowledge. Please report any adverse findings such as deformities or pain. The last part of this section is myotomes and dermatomes of the upper extremity only. 
Please report adverse findings such as a lack of sensation or diminishing strength. For the coordination exam, the athlete should be seated with good posture. They are to pick one arm, outstretched to the side at 90 degrees of shoulder flexion. The athlete is to bend at the elbow, touch their nose, and then straighten their arm back out. They must repeat this five times as fast as possible. Score them one out of one if they're able to complete without difficulty. For this section, the athlete must balance with their eyes closed and hands on their hips for 20 seconds. They will complete three times with their feet in three different positions. First, they will have their feet pressed together side by side. Second, they will stand on their single non-dominant foot. You can ask which foot they kick a soccer ball with and pick the other foot. Finally, they will stand in a tandem stance with a non-dominant foot directly behind their dominant foot. The toes of their non-dominant foot need to be touching the heel of the dominant foot and both feet must be pointed straight forward. During each of the 20 second tests, you'll need to count the number of errors committed. Errors include hands coming off the hips, opening their eyes, stepping, stumbling or falls, bending forward, backwards or to the side with hip movement greater than 30 degrees, lifting a foot up or remaining out of a test position for greater than 5 seconds. The maximum error score is 10 for each of the three testing positions. Once all three positions have been completed, tabulate their score out of 30. If the athlete is unable to maintain the testing position for at least 5 seconds during the test, they receive an automatic score of 10. Multiple errors committed at the same time only count as one error. In this section, the athlete must repeat as many words from section 3 as they can remember. They can repeat these words in any order, tabulate their score out of 10. Use a rigid object for this, preferably a tongue depressor with a small circle drawn at the top of it. The athlete will be in a seated position with good posture, holding the object at arm's length in front of them. They can use either arm. The athlete will slowly move the rigid object towards their nose. Once the object is very blurry or the athlete is seeing double, ask the athlete to freeze in place. Measure the distance from the rigid object to the tip of their nose in centimeters and record. Repeat this two more times. If the athlete normally wears glasses or contacts, they should also wear them while completing this test as a baseline. This section requires the athlete to confirm that the information they have provided is true and accurate. Have the athlete write their name and then sign it. Okay, Cameo, so for the first part, you're going to fill out on the left side here is your demographics and section one. In section one, it is how you feel right now on a scale from zero to six, zero meaning not at all, and six meaning it's really severe. When you get to the end, I can do all of the tallying for you. So we'll just tally up the number of symptoms and the severity. Uh, when you have any of these symptoms, do they get worse with physical activity? Uh, slightly, yeah. And do they get worse with mental activity, things like studying or reading a book? Yeah. Okay. Okay, Cameo, so the next section is the BSI 18. For this one, you're going to rate it not at all, a little bit, moderately, quite a bit, or extremely. And this is how you felt in the past seven days. Okay. okay, Cameo, the next section is the standardized assessment of concussion. So I'm going to start with some questions. What month is it? The date? The 9th. The day of the week? Uh, Thursday. The year? 2022. And the approximate time? Uh, about 9.45. Good. The next section is uh, immediate memory. I'm going to list you, uh, read you a list of words, and you're going to read them back to me in any order. We're okay. going to repeat that three times. Okay. Elbow, apple, carpet, saddle, bubble, baby, monkey, perfume, sunset, iron. No? Yep. Uh, perfume, sunset, iron, bubble, monkey, baby, saddle, carpet. That's it. That's all I got. Okay, so we'll do that again. Elbow, apple, carpet, saddle, bubble, baby, monkey, perfume, sunset, 
iron. Baby monkey perfume, sunset, iron, elbow, apple, bubble. Did I say baby already? Um, carpet, saddle. That's it. Okay, yep. so last time. Elbow, apple, carpet, saddle, bubble, baby, monkey, perfume, sunset, iron. Iron, perfume, sunset, saddle, carpet, monkey, baby, elbow, apple. Yeah. Good. Okay. The next section is concentration. You're going to read a list of digits backwards to me. So if I say one, two, three, you would say three, two, one. Four, nine, three. Three, nine, four. Three, eight, one, four. Four, one, eight, three. Six, two, nine, seven, one. One, seven, six, nine, two, oh, no. <laughs> That's okay. One, five, two, eight, six. Six, eight, two, five, one. Okay. Seven, one, eight, four, six, two. Two, six, four, eight, one, seven. Good. The next uh, part portion of this section is going to be listing the months in reverse order. So December, November, et cetera. Okay. Uh, December, November, October, September, August, July, June, May, April, March, February, January. Good. Okay, Cameo, the next section is a neck examination. So the first thing you're going to do is neck range of motion. You're going to start with flexion, so chin to your chest. And if any of these hurt or cause numbness or tingling or any pain, just let me know and we'll stop. Yep. So you can go chin to your chest first, go ahead. And next you're gonna go extension, straight back like this. Okay, you can come back to the middle, you're gonna turn your rotation, you're gonna look over your shoulder. Good, and the other way. Good, and then the last one is going to be side flexion, so trying to put your ear to your shoulder. Good, and the other way. Good. Any problems with any of those? No, a little pinching, but... Okay. So we'll do palpation next. So for palpation, we're mostly focusing on the neck muscles. Any pain, uh, any numbness, any tingling like that? Nope. And we'll go right down spine on spinous process as well. Any pain or concerns with that? No. Nope. Okay. The last section we're going to do is sensation and strength testing. So we'll start with strength testing. And so you're going to meet my resistance when I press against your head or on your shoulders. Okay, so we're gonna hold for five seconds. So push against me here. Two, three, four, five. We're going to push here. Good, you're gonna push forward. And backwards. Good. Can you bring your shoulders up like this? And don't let me push them down. Good. Up like this. And again, don't let me push you down. Good. Arms like this. And I'll do one at a time for this, so push here. Good. Other side. Good. And then we're gonna, you can come back to that position. We're gonna push down. Good. And other side. And so you're gonna sit here like this, and this one is going to be wrist flexion, so bring into a little flexion. Don't let me pull your wrist. And other side. Good, turn your arms around and go into extension at your wrist. Good. Fingers apart like this. Don't let me squeeze you together. Good. Same. And thumb up like this. And don't let me push you down here. Push back against me. Good. And same thing on this side. Last thing we're going to check cameo is sensation testing. So if anything feels different side to side, or if you feel like you can't feel it as much as you should, just let me know. Okay? So we'll start here. Any problem there? No. Any problem down the back? No. No problem there. That's okay. Uh, 
right down into your hand. Yeah, that's pretty oh, That's same. fine. And into your thumb. Yeah, that's good. The same? Okay. Okay, Cameo, the next section is coordination exam. You're going to pick either arm straight out to the side. Bring it in and touch your nose as, as fast as you can. You're going to do that five times. Okay. Good. Okay, Cameo, the next section is the balance exam. For this one, we're going to have shoes off and socks on, so you're already set there. Uh, which is your dominant foot? Which foot would you kick a soccer ball with? My right. Okay, so um, the testing will be done on your left foot then. For all three tests, we're going to have your hands on your hips and your eyes will be closed and we'll change the position of your feet. So for the first one, you can go feet together like this. You can have your hands on your hips. When you're ready, you can close your eyes and I'll start the 20 second timer. Good, and that was zero errors. So for the next one, you're going to stand on your non-dominant foot only. You'll be in, you'll be in a position with uh, your foot just lifted off the ground. Your, your lifted leg cannot rest against your uh, uh, leg that's on the ground, okay? Same thing for this one. You can put your hands on your hips. You can get into the position so that you're ready, and then when you're ready, close your eyes, and I'll start that 20-second timer. Good, and so that was two errors. The last one, Cameo, is you're going to have your non-dominant foot, so your left foot is going to be directly behind your right foot, okay. and the, heel, uh, the toes of your non-dominant foot will touch the heels of your dominant foot. Okay. So you can go ahead and get into that position when you're ready. Make sure heels and toes are touching. Good, hands on your hips, and when you're ready, you can close your eyes. Good, and so that was one error. Okay, Cameo, the next section is the delayed recall. So you're going to list as many of those words from before in any order. Okay. Um, baby, monkey, bubble, saddle, carpet, elbow, apple. I think that's it. Okay, good. Okay, Cameo, our last section is called Near Point Convergence. You're going to take this popsicle stick with the dot on it, and you're going to extend your arm out as far as you can. You're going to bring the stick in towards your nose. When the dot on the stick gets either very blurry or you see double, you're going to hold that in place, and I'm going to measure the distance from your nose to the stick. Okay. We're going to do three trials of that. Right there, right there, good. You can extend back out, and again. Right there, and one more time. Right there, yeah. good, thanks. Okay, Cameo, that brings us to the end of the concussion assessment. The last portion is a certification of truth and accuracy. If you can read section number nine there, write your name and sign it, please. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you.